Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform, Linda's TV show. If it's your first time and you like what you are watching, my dear friend, after watching, subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications so that you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. YouTube, I appreciate you for creating this wonderful platform for us to use to disseminate information. People are saying, why are you appreciating YouTube? Oh, in case you have forgotten, this platform is owned by YouTube. So we are using it and I appreciate them. I want to put a disclaimer again that here we do not promote violent hate speech, misleading information or instigating war. I don't like those things. So you can never see me promoting them in this platform. Cha 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 Atom go no guarantee you that is watching me either Biafra or not. Watch this video, just bring your ears down. Just watch this video. Ezoku apotawa gife. Ezoku de ka fime. A fime ada cover ya. Ade uchi e uchi. Truth is like pregnancy. Pregnancy, you cannot cover it. No matter how you try, you cannot cover. Once it's three months, boom, the result will come out. So, my great people of Biafra, I cannot start to be narrating what is going on in this video. For people that are saying, why is it that Biafras want to go? Why do you want to leave Nigeria? They acknowledge that the Igbos are the stronghold of Nigeria. In fact, I was listening to one of the interview of uh, in Arise TV um, or Bati or whatever. He was like, uh, if Igbo should leave Nigeria, that Nigeria will be empty. That Igbos are the bedrock of Nigeria. Yet, the same Igbos that are bedrock of Nigeria are being the same people that are being humiliated, that are being regarded as nothing. This man that is speaking in this video is a northerner. I want you to listen. Listen. They say when the foundation is faulted, there is nothing you can do about it. So you guys will hear from this man, not from me. That is why I said I am not going to narrate. I'm just dragging your attention so that you will have patience and watch this video. For those that say you talk too much, I need to introduce my video before I allowed it. So if you don't have patience, I beg, carry your wahala, fly away from my platform. The people here knows my value. They know what I'm doing. So if you don't want to hear my voice, also. So this man exposed. This man, meperanya. This man, kuru otoeshi for momba. Which means from the onset. And where do you find in the from the onset of the creation, the 1914 amalgamation of Mba, Ndi Britain, huh? Ndi Britico, Ndi Britico, Afufani no Moana, the Britico, Iwechine ke naga da kwasiono. Ndi Britico, Otuwe se busi si umu Biafra, Otuwe se busi si umu Ibo, Ndi Britico. Bona Caporono, only a tafufa. Get a good in him, Mokakuru. Get a good in him, Mokakuru, Melon de Britikoji, where he can, where all teaching never tell, Nduku. Get away, make ye sure, men won't hold on the bob, but after fine nata, Esinaka, Nduku, Oundu, Britiko. I am a roga, Kitaha, Matana, and a pitobi. Get merry, Makana hat, choking up and a basal on debo. Hacho hi yon bina basara ndi yi boya ka haji je bute konyo a zon mura wun biya dosa pa. Kona a chen ba an. Yifu no nyen ka ka den jo. Papu cha ndi yi bo ni yi nen di ndi yi beri yi ba an. Papu cha an an. Onu geru godi yi fa. Anyam miri na ba an. Geru godi ni ha. E gwa mi fi che na comment section. The average educated Nigerian. In order to be shown as a liberal, very uh, freedom-loving, democratic person, is always trying to be nice to the North. 
there is no reason to be nice to the Lord. Hello people, I just thought that this video is worth sharing. Just watch and share. When we talk about how far Nigeria has progressed, I think it would also be fair to talk about how far we could not progress because of the manner in which we came together. Lugard began by saying, I will form a coalition with a, an ethnic group which will help run the North and then the North will run Nigeria. He got that pattern from Uganda because the traditional rulership in Uganda meant required the British to simply govern the people using an old form of formality. When he got to Nigeria, he decided he was going to form this alliance with I mean, it became, for him, a matter of an anglo fulani alliance. And in the 1902 memo to the colonial office, he was very specific. If we, if, if, if we cannot make this generation perform as we would wish them to, we will train their children or we will train their children's children. No political party could win a majority. So every decision taken in Nigeria every arrangement made had to be based on a coalition and the coalition we set out with was very interesting the the north was the hegemonic group it had a virtual veto over the two certain states a veto in the sense of in the sense that in terms of size it was virtually three times bigger than the two southern regions and therefore, it, it meant whoever was going to run Nigeria was going to be linking the north and one of the two southern, southern regions. What do you think we can do to have a better Nigeria? And, you know, we don't need to keep worrying about the British. How do we save this country that belongs to all of us? I would want to say that the real issue is that we have not properly confronted the problems that Britain created for Nigeria. And it is because we have not confronted those problems and the answers we have been, we have been, provided, we have been providing are not consensually brought to the level of decision making that we have the problem we have. From the very beginning, the restructuring of Nigeria was meant to keep us in a certain state. Each time we have tried to make that change, to change that structure, something was done that disrupted the process. I, what I started by saying is this, that whenever we try to change things, if Britain did not intervene, the military intervened. And the kind of intervention they have made ensure that the power structure that was, that was placed, that was put in place, it's never changed. We still have a veto holder in the Nigerian political system. Yes. Well, well, wait, I mean, and that veto holder managed to have enough soldiers to keep to keep a, propo a propaganda of arms in place that made it impossible for any changes to take place. Even if you had a conference today, there is bound to be a veto holder input that we change it. How to change it? has been the central issue of Nigeria. How do you restructure in the face of a veto holder who would always intervene to make sure that you don't get a change? Is it really true to say that, you know, the uh, uh, northern part of the country uh, exercises a veto power over the rest of Nigeria? I can explain it. It has been reduced to a very bare fist issue. You have a president who can say who can say that all the international agencies dealing with Nigeria should move more positive issues to the north? That is to say, Gen uh, General Buhari, the World Bank has confessed it in the open that they are required to move things to the north. The, the structure of government as it exists has been so banalized that nepotism is almost written into the Nigerian constitution in a manner that almost all other uh, state functionaries are obliged to assume that that is the way to run a government. If, 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 that is not, if that is not 
a way of turning the veto holder into an almost divine, uh, into having a divine right to make things happen their way. There's no other, other way of explaining it. It just so happens that what was a mere veto holder yesterday has become a divine a, a divine push. And let me tell you what is more terrible about that divine there push. There are Southerners who have been exercising veto oh, I will explain. in the course of Nigerian I will explain so this. So it's not as if it's no, 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 I will, have, uh, I will explain this. The, the average educated Nigerian, in order to be shown as a liberal, very uh, freedom-loving, democratic person, is always trying to be nice to the North. There is no reason to be nice to the North. They are our brothers and we have a right to fight over the issues that we need to change. It is no, it is no longer right to be nice to the North. Because in this particular case, I give you a very, a very good example now. You have a governor who tells you that all the non fuller all the non-Nigerian Fulanis must be catered for by the Nigerian state. And actually argues it argues against the, the respect for international boundaries, argues against national policies on the ground that one ethnic group, which just happened to be the ethnic group with which the British worked out an alliance, should permanently remain a freeholder, moving across all boundaries, respecting no laws and things of that nature. If you are talking about if you are talking about all Nigerians having a right, that is a claim to a divine right that you are not allowed to touch unless you belong to that ethnic fraction in Nigeria. If that ethnic fraction had the means to create a nation, they would have created one by now. The, the truth is that between the Fulani and the Hausa, there is a very badly structured sense of nationality. The, 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 way, the way people talk about it, those who know, they will say a polo is a polo and a cado is a cado. It means that although they speak the same language, they have not managed to create a sense of nationality. And they have imposed that in every other part of Nigeria and in every Nigerian conference and situation. We just don't need, I mean, we don't, we don't have to be over liberal. Let us confront the issues. When you allow a small minority to control a majority, as I once said on this, on, on, in this station, they can only rule by falsehood and violence. Well, and that is what well, we are having. I give you one good example. The agitation for state creation and for changing the boundaries of the various states began as early as 1904. The Lorin people were already demanding to join their kids and kin in the Western region. It never happened. Do you know that the, the body of Nigeria, the Gwari, they are divided between six different states? have never been allowed to come together to form a state whereas they are contiguous but i tell you something when you don't have a governor in fact two governors bauchi and uh, and kebi when you now have two governors insisting that an ethnic group that does not even belong to nigeria should be given special rights in nigeria and you find that those who are already in nigeria like the Gwari and many other ethnic groups i will come to that they are not even allowed to come together as an ethnic group. You will know that the source of the crisis is very strong. As you are finished watching this interesting video, please, I want to see your comment, your contribution, your opinion in the comment section. Like I said earlier, let us do it constructively. Tell me what you think about this uh, video that you have just watched and also about the platform if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please remember to subscribe, put on your notification bell, share this video, and remain blessed.